everyone, it's Red Herring. I hope you're having a great week so far. In this video, I am going to go over using a menstrual cup while having penetrative sex. So if you're not comfortable with these topics, go ahead and click off of this video now. If you're still here, you're curious to know how you can have sex while using your menstrual cup or how it works. My friend and fellow vlogger Jennifer Lewis from My Menstrual Chalice just uploaded a period sex video not too long ago. So please go watch that video before you finish watching this video. Her video is more into specific details on how everything works or how can it work and how can it fit and whatnot. So there are some questions that we get asked quite often and I think her video will help you understand a little bit more before getting into my video. If you're looking for a menstrual cup that was specifically designed to be used while you have penetrative sex, then you can check out this soft cup. You can find this cup in almost any drugstore. I found them at Walmart and Walgreens and uh, Target, uh, but I'm sure that they're carried in several other places. You can find them in the area that has tampons and pads and hopefully a couple of menstrual cups such as the Diva Cup and the Lily cup. The other cup that you might want to look up is Flex and I believe they actually bought out the soft cups. So the design is exactly the same uh, but the colors and the materials might be different. I'm not positive because I didn't check between the two and I don't have my sample cup of the Flex yet so I can't do any kind of a comparison for you. If you're interested in either of these two cups, I will go ahead and leave their links down in the description below. The reading material that most of the menstrual cup companies include when you purchase a cup state that you're not supposed to have penetrative sex while using your menstrual cup. So a few months ago, I started to contact several menstrual cup companies to ask them why specifically are we not supposed to have penetrative sex while using our menstrual cup. Some of those companies say that it's because we're going to experience pain or that it's like a tampon so nothing else will fit. I was very surprised at how many asked me how it was possible and tell me that it was impossible to have penetrative sex while using a menstrual cup. A couple of them asked me to elaborate on how it's possible and then didn't really have any problems with somebody actually using their menstrual cup to have penetrative sex after that. A couple more of the companies didn't have any problems with penetrative sex and the menstrual cup to begin with. All of the cup companies did want us to remember that a menstrual cup will not prevent pregnancy and will not protect you against venereal diseases, sexually transmitted diseases, or sexually transmitted infections. Every time sex and menstrual cup come up in the same sentence, we always see the same question, which is, how is it possible? When you're sexually aroused, the vagina can expand to approximately 200% its normal size. Don't forget that a tiny human actually passes through the vagina to be brought into the world. So even if your lover is hung like a horse, or has a penis the size of an infant's arm, it still does not compare to the size of a tiny human. If you and your partner agree to experiment with penetrative sex while you're using a menstrual cup, then there should be no reason for you not to try it. Communication is going to be the key in having success at this. If you or your partner feel any pain or discomfort at any time during this experiment, then you need to communicate that. And you can either try a different menstrual cup or try a different position. When you're trying this for the first time, you'll want to be gentle. It's a new experience for the both of you and neither of you know how things are going to feel, how things are going to work, and where things are going to fit. You may want to start off with a softer cup. A softer cup can be manipulated easier and will cave into the pressure of the penis. Get to know the feeling and see if there's any pain for either of you. Let your partner move around to see if there's one position that's more comfortable than another position. It might feel better when the penis is above the menstrual cup, below the menstrual cup, or even to the side of the menstrual cup. Those are things that you're going to have to experiment with. 
If your partner is anything like my husband, he doesn't even care about the menstrual cup. He's just happy to be inside. Once you both are comfortable and you find a position that is most enjoyable for you, you can gain speed and momentum. This actually leads me into the next question that we see all the time. Won't he get poked in the pee hole? First of all, if you don't need the stem to remove your menstrual cup, you can go ahead and trim it off. You can trim it all the way off or just partially off. This way, there's less chance of the stem poking into his urethra. Not all men completely withdraw outside of the vagina. If your partner doesn't withdraw all the way, he'll likely push the stem to the side and keep it to the side. That way, there's less chance of having a drive-by stabbing. Most of the stems are fairly soft, even on a firm cup. A soft stem will get pushed on the side easily. A long stem might actually bend easier than a short stem. The one time that my husband told me that he got poked by the stem of my menstrual cup, I joked that it probably only lasted one second, and I reminded him of how many times he was poking me. And lastly, if you're worried about the stem poking him in the urethra, check out my Lifesaver Test video. In this video, I kind of demonstrate how slim the chances are that the stem is going to go exactly into his urethra. You can also think of it this way. If the stem in this video is your partner's penis and the lifesaver is the vagina, pulling away from each other that far apart if he's withdrawing completely and trying to get it into that same hole is very slim. So the same concept applies just on a larger scale. If you're still with me here and you still want to give it a try, here are some tips that might help you have a successful experience. Tip number one, empty your menstrual cup prior to having sex. That way you have a fresh cup and you don't have to worry that it's going to overflow. Tip number two, make sure you have a good seal. Again, so that your cup doesn't overflow or leak and also so it doesn't get dislodged. Tip number three. Because your vagina expands when it's aroused, your cervix actually moves up higher and your cup also follows it. This can make your cup harder to reach. You'll want to wait an hour or two to remove your menstrual cup. Or if you're having sex at night, you can wait until the next morning. That is, if you had already emptied your cup prior to having sex or if you're on a light flow. If you have more than one cup, give them all a try. You or your partner may find that you prefer one cup over another. Some cups allow more sensation than others, and some cups may add some sensations that give you extra enjoyment. I don't have any toys, but I did walk around my house to find a tool that was going to give you a little bit of a visual of how things might work or how things might fit. And the only thing that I could come up with is a stone pestle in place for a penis. This pestle is made out of stone, it's quite heavy, it does not flex, and the head of this pestle is quite large. So here is my large Super Jenny, and I'm going to place the pestle up against it, and you can see here that it doesn't even fit inside of the cup. And here is my model Kim. She has the Eva cup inserted, and the cup is placed around the cervix. So again, the pestle is stone and Kim is foam and it's not lubricated like a real vagina would be. So it's not going to slide in and I do kind of have to wiggle it. I'm going to go ahead and insert the pestle into my model and you can see how things are going to, to move around. So I've already hit the cup here and I'm going to wiggle my way up and you can see that the bladder is getting pushed to the side and if you watched Jennifer Lewis's video she does say that the penis just kind of pushes everything to the side and that's the same way it would work with a menstrual cup inserted so there we go 
I think that's all that my pestle is going to be inserted. I don't want to damage my cervix and uterus model in here. So I'm going to hold this up a little closer so that you can see how the stem and cup is pushed to the side. You never know if this is going to work for you or which cups are going to feel good for you if you don't give it a try. If you're not totally comfortable with this or if you don't care for the idea, then that's totally fine too. There are several other ways to enjoy each other while you're on your period or when you have your menstrual cup inserted. Penetrative sex doesn't have to be one of them. Well, that's all I have on this topic for now. If I missed anything or if you had additional questions, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. Also, let me know if you already tried to have penetrative sex while using a menstrual cup and how it worked for you, if you don't mind sharing that information. Until I see you next time, take care.